Welcome back. I'm Gary Parr. And I'm Beth Ellicott. And this is the midweek version of Fiber Talk, the twice-weekly podcast for the needlework artist-type people. All right. Um, tonight on the Stitch Hour, 8 o'clock Eastern, on the YouTube channel, Jennifer's mom joins us. I, I'm looking forward to this. I mean, think of all the questions we can ask Jennifer's <laughs> mom about Jennifer. Yes. <laughs> yes. All kinds of questions. Um, I tested with yes. Jennifer and uh, to make sure that the you know the signal and everything was going to work and she said that they had found a bunch of stuff that her mom had stitched and so she was getting pictures together and then uh, her mom has a collection of cross stitch and country arts or whatever that magazine was and yeah, uh, I can't remember the name yeah and then then there was some other things that they found that she had so we got lots to talk about in addition to Jennifer. <laughs> sure to be a fun evening yes. want, no one wants to miss that one it's going to be no. it's going to be a lot of fun <laughs> it'll be a great time so that's eight o'clock tonight eastern time youtube channel jennifer's mom uh Perfect. sunday is diana snyder and we had a great conversation with her one of the things that she does is she has a program that's uh, related to their local ega guild called uh, Toys, Teaching Our Youth to Stitch. And so we get to talk about that, and it's a program that they're hoping that uh, guilds and chapters across the country will pick up on to involve kids and, and get them to expose to needlework. So we, we talk I, about that, and they've, they've got a whole plan in place, so you can basically uh, get a kit, and they've got some projects and the whole bit. So it's very cool, Yeah. That'll be perfect because I, I know um, my local guild has um, been offered to – we want to teach um, a homeschool group. Oh. Um, it, it gets, we, get, we get four sessions, I think, with them, and it, um, I'm excited. So something, something we can teach them. Perfect. I don't well, have to uh, make up a program. <laughs> no, actually, you know, when, it, that's exactly what this is, this is for. That's the exact audience. And um... – uh, yeah, so you'll want to get yeah, Diana, she'll put you, it's a whole package put together. So, um, uh, yay, there's, you know, there's item one right there. You can put her, yeah, that's Excellent. a whole program, instructions, projects, the whole shooting match all put together and Diana to support. So that's what I need. You're all set. Yeah. And it's free. You just, uh, just get the material and then. Uh, get you know your guild members to supply materials, threads and stuff, but that shouldn't be a problem. Um, no, it should not. <laughs> it should not be a problem. Stash, folks, burn that stash. Yep. yep. <laughs> so uh, that'll be Sunday. Diana Snyder, uh, that's a good one. And then uh, remind everybody that uh, registration is open for the EGA National Sem National Seminar. That's August twenty four to twenty eight in New York City. And uh, at the Marriott Marquis, which is right downtown in Times Square. And so you'll be right in the middle of everything. And of course, the full go to EGAUSA.org to get the full rundown of programs, some great classes. But uh, also, yeah. you're, you're right in the heart of New York. So Broadway is just, as I recall, you basically can walk to Broadway um, to the theaters. So you can you know, go see uh, that. Uh, yeah, all of it right there. So um, if you've never been to New York, boy, you can get some needlework in, extend it a couple of days and enjoy the city and the sights and, yeah, all of it. Yep. Right. Yep. And I think um, Natalie Dupuy, Natalie Dupuy is um, lecturing, is doing one of, um, a lecture there, I do believe. Yes, she is. So mm -hmm. Yep. That, that would be, yeah, excellent. Okay. So check it out, egausa.org, uh, sign up for classes sign up even if you don't sign up for classes to go to the seminar and hang out with the people and see all the evening activities and stitch in the lobbies is you know a lot of fun so uh, especially you, you folks that are within driving distance you know you can drive down there drive to the hotel and spend four days being nothing but needlework yep fun heaven uh nancy holub from Cyber Stitchers sent me a letter that Doug Krynick wrote that uh, they're going to use in the Cyber Stitchers newsletter. 
And I thought this was it was it's terrific because it really explains what suppliers are going through these days. It, you know, and, and you know, a lot of people want to believe the pandemic is over, but the damage it did is not going to be over for some time. So this is a letter from Doug Krynick that just describes what just one company has is going through and has gone through. So I'll just read this. In spite of major derailments, an ongoing pandemic affecting supply chains and workforce, plastic spool shortage, plastic slash spool, so it's the plastic shortage and then the spool shortage, computer chip shortage, and labor shortage shortage among a few among a few, we strive daily to improve every level of manufacturing. We're running our braiding machines from 3 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Then a night crew comes in to wind. I, I just can't believe that. That just blew my mind. I mean, 3 a.m. to 4.30. That's over a 12-hour. Right. It's 13 and a half hours of braiding, and then a crew comes in to wind so they can do it again the next day. Ugh. Uh, we, we continue to focus on producing the most popular colors. However, we may have stock of another color your customer needs, so we encourage you to ask. We're working with West Virginia University's Industrial Extension Program to manufacture replacement machine parts. And that's the other thing is uh, we actually did a story in the magazine I edit, the uh, trade magazine I edit a, a long time ago about Krynik. I sent a, sent a uh, writer there to tour them. Their machinery is all old. It's old winding and braiding machinery. And I'm sure they have newer, some newer stuff. But the core of their thing is old machinery. And there are no more parts because the people who made those don't exist anymore. So if something goes down, they have to manufacture parts. <clears throat> so, and, and, you know, those old machines, I mean, it, well, if you're running something 12 and a half, 13 hours a, a day, uh, stuff's going to wear out. So... Um, so West Virginia University Industrial Extension to manufacture replacement machine parts, enable us to keep, enabling us to keep our older machines working and make us less dependent on overseas suppliers. The latest improvements include a necessary redesign of our spools. A damaged spool mold created unusable spools, which contributed to our production delays. We ran out of spools, and the spoils, spools we had required we, oh, and the spools we had required more hand processing, processing than machine processing. Well, there, you know. And they, I couldn't, I just, yeah. yeah. And then when I read that, I was like, oh my, because yeah. I can't, I just can't imagine having to hand, you know, they must have done some sort of hand fiddling with each one. Yep. And so all the time that took. Yep. That and there, yeah. It's terrible. And, yeah. When yeah. you have an automated system and you have to go to manual labor, your expenses go through the roof and productivity drops like a stone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Okay. While we invested in a new spool mold and, and molds of any kind, I don't care if it's what you're molding, are extremely expensive, extremely expensive, even for a spool, because they have to be so precise. They have, I mean, there's so much to those things. They're very expensive. We invested in a new spool mold. We redesigned it to be one size and one kind of spool for all thread sizes. The new spool will be similar in size to our larger black spool, and feature notches on both ends for securing the thread. The spool manufacturer is located in the U.S. rather than in China, which means faster production and delivery times. Spooling will be automated rather than semi-automatic, and we won't have to stop between batches to reset machines for winding different spool sizes. This means faster processing. The new spool will be flat on both ends, and that means a solid surface for the label, which means labels will stay in place. I think we all can cheer Hallelujah. for that. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, yep. Hallelujah. The new label will have UPC codes on them, making them things easier for shops to sell singles. So look for the new spools coming out soon, and he'll keep a, you know, he said we'll keep you informed, whomever. But um, you know, that, in a nutshell, is supply chain nightmare for manufacturers right there. Uh, right. Yeah. And I was going and I looking at the, you know, the West Virginia University Industrial Extension Program. My um, brother-in-law was a dye tool cutter. So he made those precision sort of things to make um, items for machines. Um, so yeah. if you need a specific part, he was the, one of those people that did it. There's very few people who are doing that anymore. We're not, 
educating people in that area, as I'm sure you know. Right. And so, I, again, you know, to get people saying, hey, this is this is really necessary. We need people to be able to make these parts, to make these things, you know. Yep. And I can't imagine all over the industry, not just for Krynek, but any um, any of the thread manufacturers, any of that, the linen, um, all of that. Yep. Oh, it doesn't matter. In manufacturing, I wrote, uh, oh, I, I, we were, I was talking to our publisher uh, the other day, and he wants to do some research, and he was wondering what topics were important. And, and one of the things I wrote to him is that the skills gap, which is uh, a gap between finding enough people with skills and then you've got uh, people who are uh, uh, baby boomers who are retiring. And mm -hmm. uh, um, like I'm at the young, I'm 67 and I'm at the young end of the baby boomers or the, at the, yeah, the young end of the baby boomers. I was born in 55. And so most of them retired. Well, that's all your talent. And the young people have not filled that gap. And I wrote to the publisher, I said that, you know, the pandemic has made that gap into a chasm. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's just, uh, you know, if you, if you have kids who are not really interested in four year college degrees, but you know, they all need some kind of schooling. I'm telling you, send them to a two year trade school to learn a craft tool and die, uh, CNC, uh, any robotics, right. anything like that, and they will have jobs lined up before they graduate. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. Um, local manufacturing around here, a whole bunch of people retired. Yep. My husband and one of them, and all that knowledge walked out the door. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and what do you do? Yep. <laughs> what are you going to do? Yep. Um, so, yeah. No, that's uh, yeah. All that's if, necessary. If you got kids, uh, send them to two-year schools. If they're not so sure they want to do a four-year school, two-year school. It's a lot cheaper. Get a skill, get a job, and then get a skill, get a job, and then get that company to pay for the rest of the schooling if they want a four-year degree. Uh, but right. you know, you get a you get well. It's a, a, a friend of ours from Illinois. Uh, he's retired now. You know, same deal. He's retired, but he was. Um, uh, a uh, an officer in the largest a painter union in the Chicago area. And same problem. They can't get people to be painters. And we're not talking about people who come in and paint your living room. We're talking about people who know how to paint bridges and water towers and know the chemistry and, you know, all the things that go with that. It's not just, not just go down to Lowe's and pick up a couple of gallons and right. uh, same thing. And, and they would pay schooling, training, everything and give them jobs that are union jobs with pensions, health care paid for the whole shooting match. Couldn't find, you just can't find people just can't find them. And, um, uh, yeah, it, yeah. Set, look, get your kids to look at two year schools because, uh, there is, there is mo and, and you come out of it without any debt and you have a job that's a good paying job. And a, in many cases, right. a better paying job than a lot of four year students get. And, um, and you go to work and you're making money and yeah, it's, um, right. And, and, and I do have a friend who, that's what he did. He, he got it. He wanted to do electrical engineering. And so he started with a two year, some sort of two year degree. They paid for him to get his, his, his four year. And then he went on to get his master's and now he's working his dream job, working on rockets in Florida. There we go. Yep. See? So, and he, and he it, was able yeah. to bring in money throughout the whole thing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's it's possible. You can yeah. do it. So, but. you know, back to Krynik, you know, that's the kind of stuff you look at. And then I thought it was interesting twice in this letter, he mentions about finding U.S. sources. That's another change mm -hmm. that's happening. People are looking for U.S. sources for product. For, for the, they want more U.S. companies in their supply chain so they are not reliant on China and Taiwan and Vietnam, you know, anything, and all the delays and all the po possible problems. They want it in the States. It, you know, that people are working toward that. and Because um, uh, you know, it, even if you pay a little bit more, look at them now. They can't put out product because they can't get spools. And uh, you get right. somebody who can deliver it and deliver quality stuff. Even if it's a little more, at least you're putting out product. So, um. right, right. 
Yeah, yeah. And, and we should just expect some of those expenses to rise in, in our craft because of the, we have to, they're having to make those changes. Right. But in the long run, it'll be better across the board, I believe. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's just yeah. thing we have to get used to. Yep. So that's, uh, you know, that's just a little peek into manufacturing uh, and uh, Krynik and, you know, everybody is, you know, all of us have tried to find a specific color or braid for Krynik and they're not available. And that's what's, that's what they've been going through and obviously right. working to get things uh, straightened out, but it takes time. And, you know, that. And we know, heard the same thing from Rainbow Gallery too, right? you know, again, you know, trying to. Where I think they moved to three shifts even. I mean, <laughs> that's just crazy. I mean, we're talking threads. Right. You know, but, um, well, yeah, th that's life saving drugs. <laughs> that's a, you know, that's a good point, Beth. Three shifts for thread making for a right. hobby. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's crazy. It is. That's crazy. But yeah. that's what, that's what they're up against. Yep. Mm hmm. But you know, th yeah, yeah, you'd think three shifts, like you said, for for medicine or something, uh, for COVID vaccine, yeah, run six shifts if you can. But right. for thread, and that's but that's yeah. what people are having to do to meet the demand. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so there you have it. Uh, that's uh, just a little insight. And uh, so when you get impatient with Krynik and with your needlework store, because they can't get it, that's what Doug Krynik and company are up against. That's what they're battling. And uh, actually, we should try and get him on a show and have him talk about that just so people can appreciate the problems. But, um, right. yeah, that's uh, that's tough. That's tough. And, it is tough. And you're at the mercy of others to provide what you need. And, ugh, yeah. So, all right. So now we, now we want to talk about the other end of stash. <laughs> you know, I can't <laughs> buy I can't buy enough stuff for my stash to do what I want to do. But you just spent a weekend – Dealing with the other end, which is when people die or get out of the hobby and what happens with their stash. So what right. you, you had, your guild had a whole uh, day of. We had a, yeah, we had an afternoon and it was, um, we were just getting rid of stash. It was a stash unload and we did not price things. It was a free will offering. And the lady who's in charge of the fundraising said, it's just not worth her time to do it. She just can't because we have had people call us and say, my aunt died and I have all this thread. Can you come pick it up and hmm. can you sell it or, you know, can you use it for your guild? And we say, of course, we'll, we'll come and we'll get it. And it's like, what do you do? You know? And then, so we're just recycling back that back to our guild. Um, and of course we had the problem with, covid that we couldn't the church where we meet prefers us not to open that garage sale up to the public they just oh. don't want a whole lot of people coming through so we've had stash on loads like that where we have had it open to the public and um a couple one of the big guilds in iowa is going to have one in june and it is open to the public um but it seems like we end up recycling a lot of the stash back through the guild in fact i know i we were we were talking as i was loading the few boxes that didn't sell um i said you know i want to see all that stash again in five to ten years what do you bet yeah maybe some of it'll be done <laughs> but i <laughs> doubt it i doubt it um it's it's kind of disheartening and and what do you do you know um a lot of it is very it's nice it's not like it's um bad it's not gone Bad, like the threads aren't ruined or um, ugly or you know something you can't stitch with right but what do you do like I'm sitting next to a pile of cruel kits from um, Elsa Williams um, a well-known designer um, of cruel and they're they actually the patterns themselves if you don't look at the color they're beautiful Mm -hmm. But we just don't do that anymore. We don't do cruel in the United States anymore. Now, I wonder if I ship this over to England <laughs> if, if, or, or somewhere, you know, seriously, if, yeah. if it would be like that would be gold to them. But we just don't do cruel, at least not here in the Midwest, not very much. Right. And, and what do you do with it? I, I mean, I, I hate 
I, I hate to say this, I hate to throw it away because that seems wasteful. It goes against my, um, I guess my Puritan roots or something. I don't know. Right. But, you know, what do you do? What do you do with these well, and, projects? Yeah, and you, you know, throwing away thread, you know, there's absolutely no reason to do that. It's all usable. It lasts forever. If it's been mm-hmm. protected at all, it lasts forever. The colors are, are usable, you know. Uh, there's, you know, it's it's almost criminal to throw that away because it's all very usable, especially if it's DMC floss that lasts forever, and mm-hmm. so somebody has to use it. Um, just yeah, but what a, it's I, you know I think we were commenting just uh, uh, texting back and forth as you were going through that, you know, and I just kind of stepped back and and thought if we look across the entire country. How many homes of of needleworkers have giant stash collections? Right. And you know, people always comment, "I've got more stash than I, you know, I'll die before I use it all." And you know, all that need all that has to be addressed someday. What you know, what do you do? And so you know, I was just trying to cook up. What as a stitcher can you do one to help your family? Because, you know, I sit here in this room where, you know, my studio where I've got a stash everywhere. And I think I need to put something in writing to help my family when I die so that they aren't just throwing this in the trash or taking it to goodwill. That it'll go to people who know what it is or, or Marga, you know, it could be Marga for all that matters. What to do with all of this stuff so that it just doesn't get trashed. One thing I'm going to suggest is going through, because I helped um, the gal who's in charge of the ANG auction. Um, that's where a lot of the stash came from. It was stuff that she says she cannot, she doesn't want to ship it to Tucson and she can't, she wouldn't be able to sell it there. So the board gave her permission to let my guild have it. It was mainly cross stitch kits, which they don't sell well for them. And, um, she said the, the hardest thing is when you find something that you know maybe someone would buy, but the threads are missing or the stitch guide is missing from the design. So yeah. let's say you have a canvas. Like I have several canvas um, that I have line drawings on them for, for geometric pieces, let's say. I should make sure, and that one time they were together, but I did some rearranging hoping to create more space but i think i'm going to have to go back and make sure that those canvases and those threads and those instructions are all together Mm -hmm. because there's who wants that who wants the you get this line drawing and you're like okay (laughs) what's this you know it it doesn't mean anything and it doesn't mean anything to a non-stitcher so if they're all together that's helpful yeah and um, and again, keeping the threads with your piece, yep. um, which seems like that's a no brainer. But we found a lot of pieces where it was so close to being done. But there's no threads with them. Mm-hmm. And, and so then what do you do? Yeah, you have to find someone who's willing to take the time to finish that piece. Or yep. it really is going to be thrown away. We you have to be honest about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because who wants to finish something? I have a, there's a beautiful piece, and um, it it really doesn't need that much more stitching on it, but there's no threads with it, yeah. which is it's so disheartening. Yeah. And it's like I just can't bring myself to throw this beautiful canvas away. <laughs> but yep. now I have to clip off the back, find someone who can supply those threads, or, or close match. Yeah. It's it's a whole nightmare. And do I really want to take the time to do that? And yeah. Yeah, when when you have a whole stack of your own projects you want to do, yeah. Right, yeah. right. Right. No, I I think and, it, it it's I think it's an issue now more than we realize and I think in the next 5 years it's going to become a major issue for uh you know, for EGA guilds and ANG chapters because it's going to happen more and more. And I mean, at some point, I just fear that that the pile of 
a available stash is going to get so high that that uh, you know people in in guilds and chapters just say look just throw it away we can't you know mm-hmm. give our members a chance to take out of it what they can and then throw the rest away and you know that just makes me cringe because that should not happen right um, yeah and 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 I think we all need you know serious look at what we can finish you know what we want to, and finish some of these things I have things that I've stitched and I think, okay, they're just sitting there. I should at least make them into a project bag so I can take it to Guild and say, see, look, I, I stitched something. <laughs> I actually have something to show for my hours of work. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's just, it is disheartening. And it was very, it was very eye opening to go through even when I, cause I went through, we were just throwing things in boxes, um, originally and then I had to go back and resort it and get it ready for the sale and looking at it all I was like oh my goodness and what's what do I have in my stash um, <laughs> and then we received the our guild received a whole bunch of DMC threads oh. and we've this is I think the fourth time we've offered it to the guild we're going to offer it again in May and then she's like I just can't keep these in my house anymore they have to go yeah. So, and I'm like, okay. Um, so, I'm going to take them. My church is doing um, uh, a craft or doing something for Operation Christmas Child, and I'm hoping to bundle them up and put them in boxes for that. Um, or another gal said um, her daughter works at a school, and they are always using the DMC or using flosses for art project for stuff. Oh. they do some stitching and stuff like that and i'm like okay we'll have to split this because that's a great that's a great thing to do let let's do that right so but yeah all that stash you know and you don't want it and some of it isn't dmc thread some of it is um jp coats i believe but mm-hmm. that thread is still good it's a it's i've stitched with it it's a great thread right um but it's just not made anymore so you can't you have to be creative when you use it. You have to you yeah. make up your own, you know, choose your own colorways or whatever. Right. But yeah, no, it's it's it's, um, it's it's a it's an issue now, and it's gonna. I, I am convinced it's gonna become a major issue, and a lot of very usable quality stitching materials is at some point just gonna get thrown in the trash, and that's just criminal. Um, right, right. And here's the other thing: um, someone gave me. A member had helped someone clean out their old stash, um, a deceased member, and there were like four or five beautifully stitched cross stitch pieces. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and she goes, I don't want them. And I'm like, I, I, I'm looking at them and like, well, what do I do with these? And they're beautifully stitched, but they're just those little small things. And I'm thinking, okay, now what? Yeah, it's it's almost criminal to throw those away. Right. And you know, I'm like but I'm not going to hang them on my walls. Yeah. Yeah. But and yeah, but, but to, yeah, to, to make that decision and throw them away is just hard. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and actually what um, I'm thinking of doing a lot, of, a few of our members go to retreat where they do smalls exchanges. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking of saying, okay, which of you ladies want to take these, make it into a small and use it in an exchange. Because to me, it would be it, it, another needleworker would appreciate that. You know, if yeah. you make it into like a needle book and say, okay, this came from one of our members' stash who's now deceased, but look, it beautifully stitched. It, it has a story now. It has a story and has a new life. Yeah. But what do you do with all of it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I, this uh, this has has me thinking, and I I am I am going to sit down and write a set of instructions for my family, so that they'll know, you know what what to do with stuff. Um, I don't know what I'm going to tell them though. That's the problem. You know, I just don't know what I'm going to tell them, but I need to right. to, you know, I just need to tell them, you know, don't just throw this stuff away. And, right. you know, I'm sitting here looking at these beautiful wood ort bowls that I've started to collect. 
you know, mm-hmm. do not throw these things away. Find a use for this beautiful woodwork. Um, you know, these these scissors are, you know, these scissors are 40 and $50 a pair. Do not just give them away. You know, make sure that they go to somebody who will appreciate them. Uh, right. You know, those kinds of things, because people look at those things and that's you know, just scissors to them. No, these are fine instruments. Don't trash them. Uh, and right. don't go cutting paper with them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And and we've have a, there's a couple of um, ladies in my guild um, who have told me that um, I get to go through their stash first when they pass it. Yeah. So that's on their wills. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. that'll be a lot of stuff to go through. Yeah, yeah. Well, we just we we just have to. Uh, I don't know. You know, if people have ideas, you know, that we. I mean, I'd be willing to put together a document of here's things you can do with your stash. Uh, if people right. have ideas, because I think we need to to give some guidance. Because I mean, we you know we've talked before, and I mean, in any any adult our age has had a conversation that the stuff in our houses uh, the kids don't want. You know, the the yeah. furniture has been passed down through generations. The China where our kids don't want any of that stuff and it's it's gorgeous stuff it's quality it's been you know it has history but they don't want it and uh you know you just at some point you know I my aunt was oh she had a collection and a half of of beautiful china and jewelry and it went to the auction house and uh the guy who was the executor of the estate he was following the rules and he wouldn't let us take, he'd let us take a few things, but he didn't want us taking very much because uh, it was supposed to go to the auction house. Well, it did. And it was all there at the end of the auction. And I'm sure it was, you know, well, I know for a fact that it was who wants this stuff, take it. And, uh, and there are several things that we would have liked to have had because they were my aunts and, uh, they have the history, and so they have meaning to us, but, you know, the, the kids don't care. They don't want any of it, and so what do you do with it? And uh, it's, you know, and anybody who has a hobby, I don't care what the hobby is, that's, it's I'm sure, an issue. My dad is a uh, has been a model train hobbyist. I mean, he's, what, 87 now? He's been a model train hobbyist since he was a kid, and I'm not, he has never let up. And he was putting a will together several years ago, and he said to me, you know, is there anything you want? And I said, I want your trains. Now, I don't, I'm not a, I'm not going to set up a train layout. I, you know, there's no way I'm doing that. I don't have the room, the desire, the interest, nothing. But I, I said I want his trains because my dad has a nice collection of brass engines. And they're brass steam engines that are molded in just some of the finest brass, you know, molds, possible every rivet every detail and several of them he's had custom painted uh to the colors or he's had custom painted and weathered as if they've been running for you know years out on the railroad they're you know at at one time they were extremely valuable extremely valuable now i'm sure hardly at all but i could not you know i I want all your trains because i'm going to get rid of the just the run of the mill stuff but I do not want to see those go in the trash because I appreciate what they are and most people won't, you know, and it's the same thing with needlework stash. You know, we appreciate what's there and, and people who are not needle workers don't. And, mm-hmm. Oh, I hate to see it thrown away. I really do. Oh yeah. I know. And I know, I know it's very, it's discouraging when it gets to, to that point and, and people not um, knowing what to, I know there are people that, take um, frost stitch especially the the charts and um, they do de-stash them that way selling them online or whatever yeah and that's one way to get them recirculated um, but I think I think the one thing we could do all of us if we would rearrange our stash so that again things are together so if you have linen that goes with a chart that it's and you have it all kitted that it's all together because yeah. that just makes life so much easier. Because um, if not, it just becomes, you know, okay, yeah, this is a bunch of paper and <laughs> yep. that's this fabric and 
Yep. Let's just trash it all. So, yeah. 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 Yards of linen that cost. Yeah. Oof. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And to them, mm-hmm. it's just rags. Yeah. No, right. No. Right. No. 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 It's like no. That, that yard of linen you bought here last week. Oh, oh man. No. Imagine if somebody threw that away just because oh, they don't I need know. that cloth. Oh, don't. No, don't do that. Oh. Well, okay. So um, we were talking beforehand that um, our guild had a, a lecturer come and she was talking about Priscilla magazine. And one of the things she talked about was that, you know, they used to get all those printed items mm-hmm. um, and then had cut work in it. And I thought, I started thinking about it. I got home and I said, I have something that's like that. So I went through my stash and sure enough, and it wasn't from Priscilla magazine. It was from another big manufacturing company, but you could tell that the linen was old. It was um, beautifully printed on there, but it was really, really nice linen for that white cut work that people used to do all the time, Mm -hmm. probably in the fifties or whatever. And so I'm, I pulled that all out and I asked, um, it was, her sister was who arranged this um, lecture. And I said, do you think your sister would like uh, these items to go with her collection? It's not exactly the same um, to go with her Priscilla magazine. She goes, oh, yeah, she she will. So I had those things. <laughs> Someone had actually had physically given them to me, you know, 10, 15 years ago saying, oh, you do needlework. Maybe you'd like these. And I couldn't bring my, I, it wasn't something I was going to stitch, but I couldn't bring myself to throw them away. So now I'm, I'm passing the stash to somebody else who I'm hoping because she has this archive of information um, that it'll add to her archive. And yeah. then when her family does something with that, all that, that it'll contribute to that. I don't, I don't know. It just, it, but it would have been a shame if um, just taken it and thrown it away. Well, yeah, that's an old piece of linen. Who's yeah. going to stitch this? Let's just make it into a rag or let's just toss uh, it. Just toss it. No. <laughs> no, no. Mm. No. No. Yeah. Well, it's a problem. So, yeah, I mean, if, if people have ideas, send them to us. We'll accumulate them into a document, uh, share them with people. Uh, just what, what can you do? What have people done to make okay. sure that their stash is addressed? You know, and I'm looking looking for things beyond. Here's the here's the number of the president of the of the local guild, uh, dumping in her garage. You know, don't. <laughs> oh, that's, no, that's no. not that's not helping anybody. That's, you know, that's just making more. That's passing the work down the road, and and then Beth gets to spend the you know how many you know, how many hours does it take to organize a giveaway thing like that? You know, that's right. Right. Yeah, you spend an right. afternoon, but. Y- you spent no, more than spent one afternoon just afternoons. so you could do it. Right, right. And and I and I now have to go back through it again and and make sure it's rearranged, see what's in there, see what didn't sell and and do something we're gonna sell it one more time in May and then and then we've gotta then it's gotta go because it cannot live in my house. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's gotta go. It's gotta yeah. go. Yeah, you know, and, and that's sad, and that's but, yeah, and that's another thing that I would say is if you're going to get rid of stuff, if you're going to sell stuff, don't view it as a way to make money. Because it, it just just you know get a few shekels out of it and be done with it. Uh, don't try to make a killing. Yeah, I know there's some charts out there that people kill to have and will pay a fortune for, but the vast majority of them, no. So right. you know, move them on. If somebody wants them, move them on. But let's not try to make a killing. Let's move them on. Um, right, right. Uh, yeah. Well, like I said, oh, here's the here, and here's my in my true problem. And I we were gonna I wanted to talk about this because it was the cruel embroidery. Um, I got the um, the note from EGA saying they had the Marjorie Jones Scholarship, and it's for cruel embroidery, and they extended the deadline till May first. And you and I were not thinking one of us should have applied for that <laughs> because Kathy Andrews teaches cruel embroidery. And she's teaching it up in the Twin Cities at um, the Region Seminar. Mm-hmm. Um, the pineapple up there. And I'm sure there's other places that are teaching it. But it's such a great form of embroidery that I think people have kind of forgotten about um, because it, it uses wool, which we don't use. 
but if you want to learn thread painting, um, and um, so it's a great, to me, it's a great step into that. Um, if you want to learn to do like thread painting, like um, Trisha Burr does, Trisha Burr does. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. Um, yes, it's Trish. a good way to start right. that. Trish. Yeah. To start that because wool is so much more forgiving than using um, DMC floss or, um, or silk, especially. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I have these, they're beautifully printed charts from this, the stash um, unload. Um, so the, they are, they're printed on linen. They've got a very pretty design on them. The colors. Okay. I think these were printed in 1976 or 79. So you can imagine what the colors are. You just imagine those, um, those colors. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I got, <laughs> but fix but I that. That's easily fixed. That's easy to fix. Or even if you didn't want to use the the wool, go ahead and use DMC floss on right. on some of these quill embroidery cloth things. But EGA is offering scholarships um, that if you take a class at the national or regional level, they will re reimburse you up into five hundred dollars right. um, for that. Now you have to do a few things. You have to either create a um, petite project or write an article for needle arts which is a big magazine or write a report to the director of education or the aga president so it it's not like it's basically you have to write a paper when you're done <laughs> you yeah. get your scholarship <laughs> but there's got to be other regions that are offering cruel embroidery um and classes that if you're interested in that technique um, it would be a great way to take that class. Yeah, that's I mean, five hundred bucks. That's um, that's not that's not chump change. That's some good good uh, uh, a good chunk of money right. to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, right. And because it, it it's to provide for either your registration, your um, like your deposit, your non refundable fee, and your kit fee. So it doesn't pay for like your hotel or your transportation, but it pays for everything else. Right. So if you're local. So, okay, so all of those people who are signed up for Kathy Andrews' class up in, in the Twin Cities, you should send in your, your scholarship application. Yep. <laughs> Since Gary and I missed out. <laughs> yeah, do, uh, th they extended the deadline for that Marjorie Jones scholarship to May 1. So right. uh, still a couple of days. But, yeah, yeah take advantage of it. I mean, if they've extended the deadline, that must mean they don't have a lot of uh, submissions or they wouldn't extend the deadline, so you know, jump right. in, yeah. Right, and then and then they have the Penny Evans Memorial Scholarship, which is for embroidery. And again, if you go um, to the EGA website, I think that one's due by May first, also. And then they have the Research Fellowship Grant, which I think I know Natalie Dupuy yep. received that one, and I know you've spoken to other people who have received that one. But that's a that one's a nice scholarship. Now that one you have to do you have to write a paper for, for sure. Write an article for the um, needle arts. But that's a nice scholarship. Yeah, cause I'm pretty sure that's the one that Natalie did, and Ornoue is what she did. And then now there's three. Um, she's done three articles in. Oh, I knew I was going to forget the name of the magazine. What's the magazine? I think it's piecework. Piecework, yes. Three articles on Ornoue, all that have come out of that scholarship. So you know, you look at that scholarship that gave her uh, some funding to do some research, and now the hobby has benefited considerably with three articles. Not to mention all the teaching she's done. That right. uh, you know, and and that scholarship played a role in equipping her to be a better teacher, to write these articles and to share her knowledge. I mean, that's, you know, that that's a good EGA investment right there. Um, right. Right. Absolutely. And so, and those are open, you know, to, to anyone who wants to apply. Um, you just need to, to apply for them. Yep. So. Yep. Uh, EGA USA.org. All right. So, so you got all these cruel kits. What are you going to do with them? Anything? I, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. And and what, what started me thinking more about them was um, 
one of the ladies in our guild took one of the cruel kits. It had two goldfinches and thistles behind it. Mm -hmm. And she said, okay, I'm not doing it in this wool. I have Appleton wool. I'm going to change this out. And then she said, I'm going to change the thistles to gold work. Because the linen is heavy duty enough to support that. Uh -huh. And she's, she's, an, she's a very, very exper experienced needleworker. And it was a beautiful design. The design itself is just gorgeous. And I thought, I need to go back and look at those again and see what's there. <laughs> so what made me, and, and then also that fact that Hazel Boom Camp is coming, even though I can't go take that class, um, there was a kit that was a partridge in a pear tree. And it's very, again, 1976 something. It, and so it's that colors. But I thought, what if you went and you just took the, the linen and took threads and did something like Hazel does and just change the colors up and use different stitches in those little spaces? It's already printed on the, on the linen. Yeah. You just add your own stitches to it. Yep. Yeah, and use it. Makes... Somebody's done a design. Yeah, use it in colors that mean something to you. And yeah, yeah, update it. Yes. Right. And the nice thing for me, and the reason I, again, I'm thinking more about working on these cruel pieces is I go to my mother-in-law's on Sundays, every Sunday, and we sit and visit for like two to three hours. And I need something to do with my hands. So I could take a cruel piece and just stitch on it. I don't need, I don't need a chart. You know, I don't need a whole, you know, a pattern. I just need my threads and my needle and away we go. Yeah. It, it's a, it's a much more forgiving than, um, a counted cross stitch piece where I'm, I have to count Yeah. and I need better lighting or whatever. So it, it, it made me really rethink these pieces. Cause I, I really don't care for the feel of wool in my hands. Mm -hmm. but that wool that Kathy Andrews has, now that's, that's another story. Um, that stuff's beautiful. Yeah, it and is It's a little <laughs> bit thinner. It's a little thinner, isn't it? Than the Appleton. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. It's, it's awful. Nice. It's not your, not, mm -hmm. not your, well, it's Merino wool, but yeah, it's not your, it's Heathway Milano. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's wool. Like I've not seen. Yeah. Right. And, and of course the only problem is, you know, I don't have a stash of that thread in my, in my, um, my stash. I don't have, so I'd have, to, if I was, you are such a, good, a complete failure, you know, you are just know, so I disappointing. <laughs> I, you know, if I was smart, I would just use the threads I have, but the call to get more, you know, after we just <laughs> talked about these stashing. <laughs> do as Kathy. I say, not as I do, please. <laughs> yeah. Kathy. Do you have a few colors that I could just change this pattern to? But yeah, I think it would be fun to change those. And and I think that sometimes we we look at these kits and they're like, oh, they're old, they're outdated. Why would I do this? But I think you can. They'd be easy to change. They'd be easy to change. Just have to think a little bit out of the box. Yeah, yeah. And and again, and I think DMC would be perfect on some of these on these kits too. Mm-hmm. Just use use DMC, even pearl cotton. Yep. And change them up. Yep. All kinds. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. Yep. Mm hmm. All kinds or, of ways or, to play. Yep. Or or silk ribbon, like we were talking Ooh. with. Um, Ooh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, this because again, it's it's heavier linen. It's not like linen um, that we do cross stitch on. Um, if you've never um, done any cruel work and you don't know what that feels like it's it's a heavier duty it's kind of cloth. almost a twill isn't it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean there's some real heft to it yeah so you can really do heavy duty stitching on it and so um even doing the gold work on it you know these pieces are a little big for that i think these are too big yeah but you know the silk ribbon would be perfect on here. Mm -hmm. Especially because two of the kits I'm looking at are wildflowers. <laughs> there you have it. And so there it would work beautifully, you know, and, yep. and it would be, 
yep, that's just what I need more, more um, projects started. Yeah, I think you do, Beth. That's I think you do. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have anything better to do. I'm pulling for you. Start more stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a, that's the new How's that's you? the new thing. SMS. Start more stuff. Yep. That's the... Okay. So how's your whip go going? Be quiet. Be okay, quiet. I'm focused here. <laughs> You're focused. Sorry. Yeah, I I, don't, I can't talk about whip go. No. <laughs> okay. I can't talk about that. First, I have to find my chart because I, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's been a failure for me. That's all right. No surprise. Yeah. Well, I, what I think I've stitched two hours in the past two weeks. I have not had, um, I just haven't had time. You haven't had time. You haven't no. had time, which totally is understandable. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's, and that's frustrating. It really is. It's frustrating as I sit here in this room every day and I can't get to it. I just can't. Um, yeah. And, and, and to me, that's, you know, that is sad because, you know, you did set up the room specifically for that. Right. And, and I know, um, Cindy suggested, um, going ahead and setting a timer. Yep. Um, and, and doing something, but I, I, that I know that's hard to do. That's yeah. hard to do. Yeah. No, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's the frustration, but. You know, sometimes I think, boy, if I didn't have to do this magazine, all the time would free up, and it, and it would. It would free up a ton of time, and I think I'd sit up here and stitch and watch TV and listen to <laughs> music and whatever. Um, but Watch shoot em up movies. That's right. That's right. But, uh, you know, magazine, uh, I enjoy doing the magazine, and a couple more years and we'll retire. So, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. There we have it. All right. I want to know what large mistake you made on your blue larkspur project. Oh, I just, I. She threw it away. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't done that yet. Although the thought has, has occurred to me. Um, I w decided to go ahead and do the whole border around the piece. And I got all the way to the other side Okay, back back up though. Blue, blue Larkspur, tell me what, what is the project? Blue Larkspur, blue Larkspur is um, by Krista West. It's an Avlia design, and it is a like a little tablecloth. Um, mm -hmm. So it's on thirty count, and I knew I should have basted lines in it, but I hate basting lines, so I didn't. Uh oh. So I got all the way to the other side, and I realized I was off. And so these little motifs in this piece are not, they're not always like two stitches away from each other. Sometimes they're two, sometimes they're three, sometimes they're one, depending on where they're located. Mm -hmm. Well, I found the mistake all the way on the other side of, course. of the pattern. <laughs> and um, yeah, and I'm just like, okay, so what do I rip? Do I rip? you know, what half do I rip out? So I just, I'm leaving it. I do have a friend that has her superpower is she can find those mistakes and then she helps you figure out the best way to correct them. Okay. I can't leave it even though technically my borders meet because all the motifs, there's a bunch of these big flower motifs going in. They will not fit. Oh. And, and the sad thing is I have ripped this um more than once i've had more problems with this design hmm. than i've had in a long time with a counter cross stitch piece and normally i'm i'm pretty good i can just go with a, a project but this one did something to my poor brain so it, <laughs> it might be <laughs> and i love it i love it and when i looked at it i i, I came across a picture of it with the mistake and i said i just love this design i love this little corner i'd love to finish it and i'm like I don't know if it will ever come out of so, time out. So it's not the chart, it's Beth. It's it's me, totally me. <laughs> I mean, I really highly recommend on one of her big square patterns that you take the time to do some basting, even if you just do um, two grid lines, uh, making sure you're, or, or even like a star pattern so that your corners meet and yeah, but I didn't do that. And I should have.
and I knew better. I knew better. <laughs> uh, highly recommend. <laughs> I and I love her designs. And so the thought is, well, if I get rid of this one, I think I've got another one in the basement that's easier. Maybe I'll just start it. <laughs> Yeah, but when you're that far, when you're that far, you, you know, if you can salvage it, you want to do it. Yeah. Right, right. I But I did, I stopped. I was trying to work like each little corner, each quarter as I went. Uh -huh. And I found a mistake as I was doing that. And I thought, you know, you need to just stop and do this, um, this border, do the whole outline of this border and get that right before you add in all these other very beautiful motifs. But, oh, <laughs> it's so pretty. Yeah. It's such a pretty piece, <laughs> Krista. Why did you, Krista, I put a note in, put in basting lines for those of us who are <laughs> mule headed and stubborn and don't want to do that. I'm telling all of you people and her, and her designs are so pretty. Yeah. Just oh yeah. Beautiful stitch. Yep. Maybe I'll do one of her surface embroidery and that, that should calm me down. Then you'll feel better. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes. We, we all have one of those every now and then. It, it just no matter what you do, it's just not connecting with you. Yep. I know. Right. Uh, okay. So do you have any like that? Is there any that, you know, like in your recent memory that you've, you've done that where you've made a, like a, it's your design, you know, your mistake, you've made a mistake in it or, or even there's a mistake in the pattern. What do you do? I had two of them and I can't remember the names, but I got rid of them. Did you really? Yeah. I salvaged uh, the thread, and uh, one was on linen, and the other was on needlepoint canvas, and I just threw that away. But the other was on uh, a linen, so I uh, and I was able to pull out and save uh, the linen. But, yeah. So I, I just, yeah, I just gave up because it was, it, I'd gotten mentally, it was just, I hate this piece. Um, and it was, I hate it because I made a mess, <laughs> you know. And uh -huh. uh, same kind of thing, like, oh, geez, oh, there's, you know, all the way back there. Now everything's off. So, yeah, I just got rid of them and yeah. did myself the, the, you know, gave myself the mental escape of instead of those looming, you just no, be done with them, move on to something else. Yeah. Yeah. But, no, I can imagine with, with that one, you have visions of how you can use it and you don't want to give up on it. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and it's legacy linen. And, and so I couldn't, it's got too much stitching in it. I couldn't rip it out oh. and use it for something else. I oh. mean, maybe the center section of it, but it's yeah. like, it's beautiful linen to stitch. Right. It's just gorgeous stuff. Well, that, and that's why I saved the linen on that one. I'm not throwing that linen away. Uh, needlepoint mm -hmm. canvas, you know, whatever. But, um, yeah, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself. No, I know what you mean. You, you can't, especially good linen. You just can't. Uh, it's, you know, pull, pull the threads out, wash it again, iron it, use it. It's not, you know, right. it's not going to deteriorate. No, use it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Got to save that. Oh boy. That's just sickening when that happens. I know. I know. And, and that's why I'm not, sometimes I, I'll go back to those projects. I'll look at them and I'll say, okay, it's worth the time to do this right. Let's take it out. Yeah. And again, my friend might have say, hey, you know, this is all you need to do. Again, she might say, Beth, you, you need to rip out half your <laughs> stitching. But and, and, and here's the other problem. It was a kit. Now, oh. Krista gives plenty of thread, but I have had to rip enough on this one that I think I'm going to have to go ahead and. <laughs> And that's some new you're, you're, you're beyond the plenty of thread. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah. Mm. But see, you know, that could be. See, that's the other thing is before you give up, I think that's good advice. Get someone else to look at it. Mm -hmm. Because you're so close to it and so frustrated, they might see right. an easy out for you and you're off and running. Um, right. Yeah, you don't right. know. And yeah. Right. And that's, and that's the thing. I know if she, if she looks at it, she might be able to help me fix it or, or, or have a suggestion, you know? Um, so, which is always a good thing. Always her, a good her thing. superpower. She, she now has a website. <laughs> I fix your screw ups. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, some people don't like it because she, she can see a mistake. Oh. Like let's say you frame something. Uh -huh. she, can, she will find, she sees the mistake. 
Um, so she's always good to have a look at it before you get it framed. Yes. But, <laughs> and, and, and if she finds a mistake and you don't want to fix it, that's, that's your business. She's like, yeah, you know, if you're fine with it, that's great. But I just wanted to point this out to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those people need to look at it before it gets in the frame. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yes. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. oh, that's oh, too bad. That's so sad. Oh, that's mm-hmm. too bad. Well, let's hope you can fix it. Yep. I hope so. Yep. I hope so. All right. We're gonna call it on that absolute downer note, we're gonna call it <laughs> for the for the week here. So oh. <laughs> but we get to talk to Jennifer's mom tonight. We and do. that'll bring us yes, and find yes. out more about Jennifer. Yep. Yep, we do. So it'll be okay. fun. All right, so yeah, so now another thing we learned though is Beth has a bunch of cruel kits. She doesn't know want to know what to do with. If you want to play with some cruel, you know, yeah. maybe, maybe Beth can help you out. I don't know. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe mm-hmm. so. Just yeah. uh yeah. Yep, maybe. Let us uh, know. Yep. All right. You know, we're uh I think I I think I've got a couple hours here now this evening. We're recording in the evening and I think I have a couple hours. I might try to get a little little stitching done. That would be kind of exciting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Take me a that half a hour just thing. to take me a half hour just to get organized again. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, I can't, Gary, you, you really need to get something set up that when you have a spare moment of time that you can just grab and stitch. Yep. I know. I know. I got. I just got to force the issue. Yep. I do. Uh, the band sampler. The band sampler. I know. Oh, I had a thought. Okay, I had a thought. Okay. And it, it, you know, this is my traveling sampler. All right. Here's here's. Okay, this is. I don't I don't share a lot of my personal life, but th- okay, I'm I'm getting a new bike. All right. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I'm get, getting in the next couple of weeks. I'm getting a new bike. I'm getting a bike that is designed for light touring because my my main road bike is not built. It's not, it's a full carbon bike and it's not made for hanging bags off of and other things. I mean, it's made for going out on the road and just riding. And uh, so I'm getting a new bike that's an aluminum frame that has mounting points all over it so you can hang bags because I'm going to... Uh, do some uh, light touring. I want to do some overnight trips. And my sister and I at the end of July are going to ride from St. Louis to Kansas City and back, which is 500 plus miles um, over the course of, I don't know, six or seven days, something like that. But I want to start doing that kind of thing. And I can't do it with my road bike because it's just, well, number one, it, it's, it's too expensive and it's not built to take a beating like you put in with touring. So Right. Um, and then this new bike also is designed so you can ride on dirt roads and go through the wilderness. And um, uh, so, so I'm getting a new bike Ooh. for to do all that because I, it's a, you know I just want to go do some different things. And here in St. Louis, I don't have to drive very far at all, and I can really do a lot of cool things. So, um, but then, uh, okay, so what's that got to do with needlework? I think that's where the banding sampler. I was I was actually mentally putting together how can I b- put together a small enough kit that that can go with me on overnight trips, and right. and uh, you know I'll, like if I stop to take a break in the afternoon from riding all day, break it out and stitch. So I think that's where that's headed. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Or even you know just for our, you know when you because you're you're hoteling right so right right. A, stop and have your evening meal and then you can sit and stitch for a few hours and right. crash. Yep. Perfect. I think so. So I, yeah, I was, cause I was thinking, all right, I got to combine the two hobbies somehow. And then it, it occurred to me that cause that's, that's small, lightweight. It's only one thread color. Uh, right. you know, it's, it's lightweight. I can put together a little tiny pouch of stuff. So I'm not hauling a bunch of extra weight. And um, I think I can do it. So that's uh, that's. And what's and what's the count on your band sampler? It's is it twenty seven. Twenty eight. Twenty seven. And you do, are you doing it over two? Uh, no, over one. Over one. 
Yeah. So you'd need your like a reading glasses right. or something. Right. Because you're not going to yeah. take your magnifier off. No, no. <laughs> No, but that's what I thought. I could get like a 2X or a 3X reading glass right. and um, uh, I should be able to do it. So, because oh, yeah. I want to get that finished. I really do. I like that piece. I want to get it finished and I have other banding and I'd like to start other things, but I won't let myself until that one's finished. And I just think it looks really cool. So, um, Oh, it does. It does. I, I, I think that's a... I think that's just a fabulous piece and it was a fabulous idea. And uh, yeah, because yeah, so, it's one thread, you're, you're really, right. you know, what do you need? A needle? A cup? Well, a needle pack. I would highly recommend right. a needle yeah. pack. Yeah. Uh, scissors, your glasses, some sort of um, frame to hold it. Right. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, a little hoop and, mm -hmm. um, uh, and yeah, and and some something to magnify. Yeah, and, and I think it's um, uh, I think it's a, a cool thing that yeah, because you know I ride all day, get to a hotel hotel room, take a shower. And now what? Because it's not like right. I can haul I can't haul the computer or the tablet, and right, you know, phone gets old looking at that. So <laughs> you know why not? And then I, I was thinking during the day. I mean, I'm going to stop here and have an ice cream. Maybe it's the middle of the afternoon. Maybe I'll just you know, sit and stitch a little bit before I get back mm -hmm. on my bike. Why not? So Right. Right. Um, yeah, so I think so. I think we're going to give that a whirl. Mm -hmm. Yep. Got to get the bike first. Yeah. <laughs> you talk about supply chain problems. Yeah, bikes. Oh, oh I man. can't imagine. Ugh. I can't imagine. Ugh. Terrible. So, yep, as soon as I get that and get uh, get it equipped, yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, go, uh, you know, leave on a Friday afternoon. Ride 50, 60 miles, uh, stay overnight, ride back the next day. And, um, yeah, that kind of thing. And, uh, or, yeah, that's or, a great idea. Yeah, or leave Friday and come back Sunday and have a two-nighter. Because, yeah, there's all kinds of opportunities, especially out here, a lot of opportunities. And interesting riding, not just riding through miles of cornfields like I had in Illinois. Um, <laughs> yeah, that gets rather dull. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, uh, but yep, so that's kind of the, that's where that one's uh, headed, but um, I really need to work on that, because I really like it a lot, I love the blue, see, that's the trouble, I love that blue thread that I'm using, and um, I gotta, yeah. I gotta do it, yeah. I gotta do it, all right, we need to wrap this up, um, tonight, join us, Jennifer's mom, on the Stitch Hour, Sunday is going to be Diana Snyder teaching our youth to stitch, and that's an interesting thing. Uh, that's it. Thanks for listening. All right. Bye.